Seven Days to Die is an open world, voxel based, sandbox game that is a unique mix of first person shooter, survival horror, power defense, and role playing games. The game takes place in the near future, where a third world war has left the earth in ruins, and an unknown virus transforms the surviving humans into bloodthirsty zombies. You play a survivor trapped in Navasgame County, Arizona, one of the last true Edens on Earth. Navasgain's environments include wastelands, forests, snowy mountains, plains, burnt forests, deserts, and radiation zones. You'll discover hundreds of points of interest, ranging from caves, campsites, and bandit camps, to small towns, farms, and factories, and even cities and skyscrapers. And every building can be explored inside and out. The story unfolds through our dynamic story generation system that guides the player to other survivors, better loot, and undiscovered points of interest. To survive, you must scavenge the world for food and water to keep up your health, stamina, food, and hydration levels. And maintaining these stats is more than just a tedious chore. You can actually boost your stats for increased health, stamina, strength, speed, and jumping ability, giving you added capabilities when venturing into the most dangerous places. You can also live off the land, growing and harvesting crops like corn, potatoes, and blueberries, or learn to hunt, track, or domesticate wildlife like deer, rabbits, wild boar, pigs, and bears. In Seven Days to Die, the day and night cycles dramatically affect the strength and speed of the zombies. Light slows down and weakens the zombies, so you better take advantage of the daylight to search for loot, mine resources, craft items, weapons, and traps, and build up your fort's defenses. But when the sun goes down, the lunar cycle speeds up and strengthens the zombies, so you'd better be somewhere safe, because the zombies will come running in hordes to break down your walls. In Nava's game, you can loot and mine a multitude of items and ingredients, and combine them using our intuitive and deep crafting system to make new things. The system features a spacious 5x5 grid, and you won't need a wiki for it. The gameplay is simple and inspired by classic adventure games, and every item in the world has many uses. With it, you can create hundreds of items, including clubs and knives, shotguns and rocket launchers, landmines and spiked pits, motion detectors, motorized tools, auto turrets, generators, potions, remedies, and more. We're even planning special quest-driven craftable reward items like high-tech weaponry, gadgets, and vehicles. The enemies in Navasgain are diverse in appearance, scale, behaviors, and abilities. But one thing they have in common is their relentless pursuit as they claw, jump, climb, and break their way through the world to get to you. They can see, hear, and smell, and will often work in a group. Clean up corpses, bloodstains, store your food well, and hide your livestock because the zombies will sense everything. We also have special infected enemies, including the acid puking hulk, whose vomit can melt blocks, or the chain gun toting wasteland bandits, even bosses like the crazed Duke of Navasgain and his army of mutated soldiers. One feature we're very excited about is our dynamic block stability physics system. Here's how it works. Every block type in the game, like dirt, stone, wood, and metal, has a different structural durability and mass. For example, stone can be built out further than dirt, wood can be built out further than stone, and metal can be built out further than wood. The system simulates real-time structural integrity. Blocks can't float in the air, nor can you build an unsupported structure to the sky. Blocks can even fall from the additional weight of other blocks, players, or zombies. You can even drop blocks on zombies' heads by setting your own traps. And the system even works to simulate chopping down trees. Every item in the game has a quality level that degrades with use, and similar items can be combined to create better items. As your crafting skills increase, so do the quality of the items you build and your ability to use them. All food and water items in Navis Gain have a purity level. The higher the purity level, the higher the health and stamina benefits. The lower the purity level, the greater chance for disease. Boost your cooking skills to make purer food and water, free from disease with added nutritional benefits. In Seven Days to Die, you don't always have to go in guns a-blazing. You can also sneak past enemies or throw objects using sound distractions to avoid a horror. You'll also discover and craft a multitude of sight, sound, and smell deterrent or attractor recipes and items to throw the zombies off track. It wouldn't be a role-playing game without XP and skill trees, 
So in 7 Days to Die, you can gain XP and upgrade your usage and crafting skills in melee, guns, items, recipes, and stealth. For example, if you upgrade the melee skill tree, you can learn to craft a better quality club and swing it harder and faster to bash in a zombie skull with less blows, and even learn a special finishing move. 7 Days to Die can be played in solo, co-op with friends, or multiplayer in our unique Zombie Nomad mode. Play a human, a bandit, or a unique zombie for a no-rules experience. Watch the leaderboards and fight to be the Big Clan of the Wasteland, or the Duke of Navisgain. Our creative mode tools will allow the fans and the community to build their own worlds and play them with their friends. The tools feature hundreds of block shapes, prefabs, and random generation tools. Create dedicated servers with your own unique game rules. Play the handcrafted campaign or your own randomly generated world, enhanced with your own personal touch, 